Having a dedicated YouTube space to film your videos is gonna really help with the content creation process. I started my YouTube channel back in 2016, and over the years, I've made a ton of different styles of content, but one of the things that keeps me consistent is having a dedicated space that I can come to, flip on the lights, hit record on the camera, and get going. Now, I wanna say a special thanks to Uscreen for sponsoring this video, and I'll talk more about how I use Uscreen in a little bit. Keeping my workflow super simple, where I don't have to set up all this lighting and then figure out my camera settings and then figure out the best place for audio, and everything else that goes with you know hitting record makes it so that it's just easy to make videos. And I think for a lot of niches out there, having a dedicated space that you can come back to and just be able to flip on the camera and hit record, it's gonna make it so much easier to just stay consistent on the platform because one of the ways that you're gonna grow a YouTube channel and build an audience is by being able to have videos on your channel that are an easy format to make and makes it consistent. Some creators you'll see have the same set for every video that they make. And having this dedicated space just makes it so much easier for the process so that you could focus more more on the content that you're producing rather than all the technical stuff that you have to do every time you wanna press record. So in this video, we're gonna go through all of the different YouTube studios that I've built since 2016, and my goal is to give you some ideas of how you can convert your space into a place where you could turn on the camera, turn on some lights, and start recording. Now this video goes through a ton of aspects around the technical side of putting a studio together, and also throughout there's just a lot of good information about the content creation process. So we'll first dig into my YouTube studio that I built in an apartment. The second one is one that I built in a detached garage. The third one we'll go through is this studio here. And the fourth thing that we'll dig into is what I do when I'm not here in my studio. Now, before we get into each one of these studios, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, which is Uscreen. If you want to become a full-time creator, then you need to build a business around the videos that you're creating. And one of the ways that I bring in revenue for my channel is by building courses that I sell on my own website, thecreatorfilmschool.com, which was built on Uscreen. They make it super easy to be able to build a platform to house all of your courses, or even just a single course and make it available to purchase, rent, or put into a membership. It's basically an all-in-one platform that gives you the ability to build a business as a creator. And what's cool with Uscreen is if you wanna build a membership, you basically can produce your own Netflix-style catalog for the content that you're producing. And also with your catalog, you have access to building your own community. So you can engage with your students, you could also do things like live streaming within the platform and be able to keep the conversation going and be able to stay engaged with the people who are part of your membership or buy buying your courses. Now there's also some features that allow you to be able to build your own apps. So if you're someone who wants to have a smartphone app or an app on like Roku or Apple TV, well Uscreen gives you that ability to have your own standalone app and Uscreen also gives you a ton of marketing features that makes it super easy to run your business all in one place. Now personally, I chose Uscreen for my membership because they handle all the payments, billing, monthly subscriptions, and they have easy to use templates that are designed to monetize your videos quick and easily. So if you wanna launch your business as a video creator, I highly suggest checking out Uscreen. I'll include a link down below in the description where you could do a free trial. And if you wanna see how I've used Uscreen, we'll head over to thecreatorfilmschool.com. You could see how I've built out my whole sales page. And then if you click the catalog at the top, you could see all of the different videos that I offer. And you could purchase some of these courses as a standalone, or you could get a membership and have access to everything. It's just a really cool and simple way to put all of your paid courses and content in one place and make it super accessible for your members. Now, if you wanna build your own website with courses or your own membership platform, then make sure you head over to Uscreen and check out all the options that they have available. I'll include a link down below in the description to where you can start your free trial right now. All right, so now let's jump into all the different YouTube studios that I've built since 2016. In this video, we're going through how you build out your YouTube studio so you go from this to something more like this or something more like this. So if you wanna do more of the artificial lighting with the colors in the background or you wanna do more of a daylight studio, I'm gonna go through the different things that I do to be able to create my YouTube sets and I have two sets built here in one space. So guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do a lot of filmmaking tutorials, product reviews. I also do a lot of YouTube training. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications if you wanna learn how to grow your channel and get better using your camera. 
So originally I just had the one set built in this room and it's been evolving over time. And that's something that you need to think about when you're going about creating your set that you're gonna use for your YouTube videos. It's not gonna be perfect the first time you set it up and you get going. You're gonna keep evolving this over time. Originally I started with my artificial looking set. It has a lot of colored backgrounds. Let's just go over there. And this set I use all the time to create my online courses, to create tutorials, but there's a lot of times where I don't wanna just be sitting here talking to camera. So this is a good setup that I've built for this style of content. But when I wanna like show a product or I wanna be more involved with the things that I'm working on, have a little bit wider shot, that's why I built the other set with the standing table. So you have to kind of think what kind of videos are you gonna be creating and that's gonna dictate what style of set that you wanna build. Now, like I said, this is more artificial lighting. So I have completely blocked out all of the light in this room. And as you can see over here, this is my window. And so I've put a piece of duvetine across my entire window and that means that all the light in this room I have put in here, so everything has a purpose. Whereas when you go to my other set, I'm gonna pull this off. Now I didn't turn off the, the colored lights back there, but this is more of the natural daylight studio. So I used light from the window and then I have one light to fill in my face so I have a nice look on my face. So we're gonna talk about the lighting and then I'm also gonna just talk about camera placement, audio, things like that. For this video specifically, I'm using a lav mic. That's the one that's on my shirt right now. And I'm actually just using a little audio recorder. So this is my Tascam DR10, but the DR10 is an audio recorder. And I use this all the time because you can see your levels on it and you can actually just record and then sync it up later in post. So I have four cameras going. I have one, two, which are my two cameras I use for my sets. I've got my 360 camera back here. And then I have a fourth camera and I'm using this just to give you guys some details as I walk around so I can point out specific things and be able to show you guys exactly what I am doing instead of having to cut and you know, do some B-roll. I'm gonna shoot another video on how I create videos faster using multicamming. And that's essentially what I'm doing with this workflow. Okay, so let's get into the set build. Like I said earlier, I have duvetine. That is this black material, it cuts out all light. Now duvetine is great for covering windows. So what I've done is created eyelets on the duvetine. And you can see right here, I've made these myself and just used a little command strip hook to attach it to the wall. For me, that makes it super easy so I can just hang this up anytime that I wanna put the black on the window and cut out all the light. Now I've also put up the hooks here on this side and the reason for that is I've done it in the past different backdrops here so I don't have to pull out like stands and I don't have to pull out like a bunch of gear to be able to put up a backdrop. And I have a bunch of these cloth backdrops. If I wanted to do say like more of a brick background and I've used this for different videos, then this works great. I put eyelets in this as well and hung it up on the wall. So one room can have multiple purposes. And I think using your room multi-purpose makes it so that you can have more flexibility in the content that you're shooting. I do a lot for my office, so I enjoy having the flexibility of building out different sets here. Now let's talk about lighting. So I use an Aperture 120D. That is my main light right here. That provides all of the fill light on your face. And so I put that at about a 45 degree angle from the camera. So I have my camera, my GH5 right in front of me, right off to the side, is my Aperture 120D. And you can see that I just have this sitting here and it's always put up. I never tear this down. Super easy, I put an egg crate on it and what the egg crate does is it focuses the light a little more. So if you take the egg crate off, what happens is the light floods further around the room. So I always use an egg crate so that it focuses more of the light on me, less on the background. The idea is that you wanna create different pools of light. So where I'm at, this section, that's one pool of light. And when you're lighting the background, you wanna think of that as a separate pool of light. Because you could do different things in the background, you could put different colors, different exposures, you can bring up the ambience, bring down the ambience, and it will change the feel and the look of how your whole space works. But if you're relying on your one light to do everything or like two lights, and this is also controlling your background, then it's gonna be a lot harder to get the look that you want. So I always say independently control 
your space where your subject is and then your background and try to create two pools of light. And that's the easiest way to think about it when it comes to building out like a YouTube set is think in those terms. What is the background exposed for that and then exposed for your subject, you, and exposed for that to match the background or be a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, however you want that exposure difference to be in your shot. And this is something you can start looking at when you're watching other YouTubers, is look at their set. Is their set darker than their subject or is their set brighter? Are they in a big, bright, open space or is it a very dark space and the subject is lit brighter? Or are they equal? Because you could also do that where they match perfectly. Okay, so let's talk about my background. I have just these simple strips behind my desk, which creates the color of light. These are cheap, they're like 20, 30 bucks, and it just changes color based on whatever you wanna do. So I got a remote here, and I can change, you know, I can change an orange, change a purple, can do white. So these are good if you wanna create pops of color in the background. Now, another way you can do this is using these small lights. So this is the vlogger light, and the other one that I have, which is illuminating my YouTube award right now, is the Pilotfly Atom Cube RX1. Two good options. I actually like both of these lights. I like the Pilotfly a little bit more for the options that you get in the light. However, this does come with a nice mount, which allows you to hook it to basically anything. So you gotta pick your poison what you like better. When it comes to this light, you can change the colors so I'm gonna to change to now, I got a blue. I'm gonna put it at 100% brightness. And let's change the color a bit. So as you can see, I am changing the color. So let's say I put this in the background. Let's go to a bright like pink or something. There we go, we'll do a purple. So now you can create the entire color of your background just using one of these little lights. And these things are super powerful. So as you can see, this two pools of light is working very well because I am still lit properly for the exposure for this camera, but I've just added this purplish blue light in the background, which is creating the crazy color all over in the background. So if you want color, either use LED strips or pick up one of these lights and you can change any color. So let's see, there's pink, there's red, we got some yellow, green. So you can really just play around and create whatever color you want. And something like this, you can literally just throw it on the floor and it illuminates the entire background. And as long as you have that separation of the foreground and the background, you can create different color effects using this. So for me, I have my background being a big picture. It was on a mirror. I don't know why I'm still using this color. And you're probably wondering why I just stuck white up here. I'm bringing up the general ambience of the room. So if I didn't have this on, when I'm sitting over here at my desk, it's actually a little bit too dark in the background. So I personally like bringing up the ambience a tad. So something else to think about is playing with those levels of ambience in the background. So let's talk about my backdrop. I had two mirrors here originally. I got this picture, I just got it off Amazon and it fits my brand. So you gotta think about when you're creating your YouTube studio, what's going to fit your brand. So for me, outdoors, mountains, I do a lot of climbing films. If you haven't seen my most recent climbing film, I highly suggest you go check that out. That fits my brand, I do a lot of climbing. So I got this, it's just a sticker. And you can put these on walls, you can put these on mirrors, anything. That's how I created this image, it gives some nice depth to the background. And then my closet, which is where I house all my gear, this is essentially all of my gear. It makes it organized so I can just grab things that I need. Bunch of other stuff, one of the most important things is a label maker. I do use this all the time. But instead of having just like a blank background, I decided to put my gear back there. The idea is to create some depth. So instead of just flat walls, I'm trying to create more depth in my space. So it feels like there's more going on. Obviously you don't wanna have it too cluttered, but having some depth. So you see this a lot of times, people will put gear and stuff in the background. You just need to find out what works best for your space. For me, I had this closet, so I built out shelves and I put all my gear on it, but you might need to add something into your room. Like you might need to add some shelves units so that you can add some depth moving upwards. 
because you gotta think about it. You don't want just things on the ground around you. You wanna build up as well. You wanna be able to build out your whole space so it feels like you're in this environment so that you're hanging out in my space. This is like my creator lab and that's kind of how you wanna feel. What does your space look like? And if you look at someone like Casey Neistat, he had that space in New York and that was like a mad scientist for creators. And so like you really got into his space and you had all this texture and all this depth. That was his brand. So what is on brand for you? What is going to be in the background that fits the content that you're creating? All right, let's move on to set number two. And this is my more daylight looking set. This is where I'm able to have a table in front of me and work with different products. I was just shooting a review about this whole gimbal ring. My wife decided to print something while I'm shooting, but I was just doing a review on this. So this is a good space where I can have things laid out in front of me and be able to work with a camera that's a little bit further, so this is not an arm's reach away. I'm using a 35 millimeter lens equivalent because I'm on GH5, so it's a 17.5. But I have distance, I can't really see the screen over here. So what I have is a monitor. My Atomos Shinobi is great for seeing what's going on over there. So I add a monitor so that I don't have to be next to the camera to see focus, exposure, all of that. This is a, a quick release that Zion makes, Zion, however you want to say it. And I put these on all of my mounting points. So I could just pop these on and off. They're metal and they're super easy to attach things like monitors, clamps, anything. They're essentially made for tripods on the bottom of gimbals. And that's what I think they were originally intended for. But I found that these little clamps are useful all over the studio. So anytime you need to mount something and you don't want to have to screw it all the time, you add one of these mounting points, it just pops on and off. Now, the way that I've set up audio in this room is that I have a microphone above me. Now I do this for both of my sets. I only have one of these microphones. It's the next thing I need to add is a, another mic, so I have two. That essentially allows me to have the mic at the perfect position above my head. I use a Sennheiser mic. These things sound really good and you can see the difference. Here's the sound of the lavalier. And now here is the sound of the mic overhead. And over there, it's a little bit better with terms of reverb because I'm not projecting out into the room. Are you coming in? Okay, come say hi. Hi. So I'm, expla hi. I'm explaining how my room is set up. So do you want to give an explanation? Can you pause? I need him to take care of something real quick. Now something else that I do and you can see this over here. I have some more stands laying around out in the background here. I got another C stand here. And I have these stands laying around so that I can do more in this space. Like if I wanna put a camera above, I, I can rig it up so that I can have a top down shot. So having some different pieces on hand makes it easier so that if you're like, hey, I need to get grab this shot, you have the gear sitting around, you can grab it and get your shot. The same reason I have my closet set up in this way where I have all the gear accessible, everything's labeled so that I can just grab gear, do my shoot, throw it back, and I'm not spending tons and tons of time fumbling with gear because over time it does get frustrating. So in terms of lighting in this daylight space, I use an Aperture 120D. I'm telling you these lights with the small softbox on the egg crate, that is like the best light I've found for this style of creating content. You don't need that huge softbox. The small one works, you're just illuminating one person, and then you use other lights to bring in some other lighting around your space. The 120D is lighting for me. The lighting in the background is all from my window. So I play with my blinds and the different amount of light. And I use my blinds to control how much light I want in the background. So more of a daylight looking studio. And if you have a space where you get direct sunlight coming into your room, maybe you have the sun peeking through your blinds and it creates a nice pattern on the back wall, use that to your advantage because having some texture in the background with lighting looks really good. So look at ways that you can use the natural sunlight to bring some texture into the background. Now, one thing that you want to avoid is just putting yourself in front of a window and then having the background fall to black. Now that is a great way to get started and just illuminating your face because when you stand at a window, it's gonna give you the best looking light. It's gonna give you light looking like this. However, if you just have the light fall off to black in the background, it just doesn't look that good. This is a great place to start. However, this is much harder to control than if you are to illuminate yourself using lighting and then controlling your background by bringing up the ambience or bringing down the ambience. And so that's why I don't use windows to light myself, weather conditions change, the look changes. And so that's why I like to use 
the, my 120 Ds to control the light on me. And then if I have anything in the background, I'm gonna use my blinds or the other lighting that I have to control that. So when it really comes down to it, there's a few things that you need to think about when you're creating your YouTube set. One is your brand. What is your brand and does your set show off your brand? The second thing to think about is lighting and think about it in two pools of lighting. So front pool, back pool, and you don't have to be super crazy with the lighting that you're using. I use one light frontal to light me and then I use some different lights in the background to give it some texture, to give it something a little bit different. So think colored lights if you like that look or think using a window or another small light to bring up the ambience. So in this video, we're gonna go through how I turned my garage into a full YouTube studio. I went from this to this, and also I've created all of these different looks out of this space. Now I have a little special assistant today because someone is on a nap strike. So are you gonna show them the studio? All right guys, let's get into it. So last November, we moved from our apartment into a house and on the property is this garage. So I thought it would be the perfect spot to build out a studio. However, when we moved in, this was completely unfinished. I've got the master insulator here. This is my father. He's helping me build out my studio. You got some extra foam in here? Yeah, I got some right there for you. Yeah. I've had a ton of you ask me about this backdrop and I'll explain kind of how I came up with this idea. My storage over here, my workspace over here. And then, you know, we're gonna talk about what's coming next because after I finish recording this video, I have to tear all of this down. So she's clearly interested in this giant screen that I have right here. So I guess one of the key things, let me turn this camera on. So one of the key things that comes to having a space like this is, you know, being able to see yourself. And I've always thought that having a big monitor makes it so much easier to create content. So this is actually a ViewSonic computer monitor. You know, these are super good for doing like color grading and all of that. I actually did a video about this monitor specifically and instead of using it for my computer, I'm using it for playback. So I have my camera over there, my playback here, so that I can see myself on a massive screen and be able to, you know, see focus, color, exposure. Nice burp. All right, it's time to go get some food for this little one. I'm gonna go drop her off. Okay, well, it's not food time yet, so she's gonna hang out with me a little longer. So the cameras that I'm shooting on are the Panasonic GH5. One over there, one right here, and sometimes I use a third. And you can see from these three shots, I'll set up different looks around my studio with moving cameras. So this is kind of standard. I have my setup over here. I have enough separation where I can, you know, shoot. So I have some depth back here and this goes out of focus. You know, with a micro four thirds, you definitely need to get yourself further away from the camera. So for audio, what I'm using is, I guess, let me back this up, hold on. So I use a Sennheiser mic and it has a pattern where it gets very good audio right here. It's not a super long shotgun mic, it's actually a stubby. And the reason is I'm only talking in this space, so I want clean audio here. I don't need to get audio over there. Use a shotgun mic to get our audio further away. Now, if I'm doing something where I'm walking around the studio, I'll put my camera on a switch pod, I'll walk around, and I'll use just a Rode shotgun mic on top. Sometimes I'll do wireless mic, but when I'm in the studio, you know, I've tried to make this as soundproof as possible, so I just use mics on top of cameras, and I generally get good sound anywhere I go in this space. Now, one thing that I found that's really cool about working in the studio space is the ability to shoot in different spots around here. So sometimes I'll put the camera down low on the ground over there. Sometimes I'll put it in different corners, but you can create a ton of different looks if you just think of the studio as a whole. I have my set here that I enjoy creating from, and this is a great spot to do like reviews, anything with a computer, like this is a good standing set. But having this kind of geodome design that I've built 
It allows me to kind of like put myself down into the space. I can be in different corners and this becomes like a focal point. So what a geodome is, is like a structural thing that you build. And what's really cool about this setup is that I built this from like a pre-made kind of kit. So each one of these corners that you see is a plastic little attachment and it has five or six places where you can attach these wooden dowels. Now how you use these is you put them in a certain pattern and it ends up building a full dome. Now for me, what I did, because I needed to build like kind of a three wall set to be able to shoot into, I just built half the dome and then I attached it to the ceiling. So if you look up here, I've just attached it to the roof and then all of this background material that I've used is just a fabric that I found on Amazon. So these are just little fabric pieces and I've just staple gunned them to the different wooden dowels. And that's how I made my backdrop. Now, the idea behind this backdrop was that I wanted something kind of adventure related. I didn't wanna just do what everyone else does with colored lights. I wanted to do something that kind of encompasses the bigger thing that I want to do, which is create a venture style film. So I wanted to create something that has that feeling. And the geodome, even though it's not something you see all the time, it is something that you do see in more like outdoor style of structures. It's, it's a pretty cool structure idea. And when you see houses and tents built in this way, they look great. And I thought for a studio, this would be cool. So for you guys, don't just go and like make a geodome, but think through where does your content fit? Like, what is your style? Beyond just being like maybe filmmaker or photography, like that's something that you do. What kind of feeling do you actually wanna give your viewers when they're watching your videos? I wanna stay in that adventure realm and that's something that, you know, if you watch my last video, I was talking about how I've started a second YouTube channel that's gonna be all just adventure films. And that's because that is something that I do outside of this channel. This channel, gear, tutorials, reviews, YouTube education, like it's great, but it's not everything that I do. Okay, so let's talk about lighting in this space. I have my main key light back here. That is my Aperture 120D Mark II. I'm a big fan of the Mark IIs, they're great. I actually have the Aperture 120D Mark I up top there, that's a hair light. And what I have on both of these is the small softbox. I use the small softbox with the egg crate so I can focus in the soft light a little bit better. Now I like using the aperture lights because I can dial everything in on a remote. So I have this little remote and I could turn things on and off. Oh! Sorry about that, my uh, daughter just spit up all over me. Do I have it on me? It's okay. If you've noticed the last probably three months of videos, you'll see spit up here and there kind of all over. It's just, it's part of having a four month old. So for lighting, sometimes you'll see that this backdrop I'll light in different ways, whether it's color or just light. So recently I've been doing more of this kind of style where I just use these cam TV strip lights. Now these are amazing because not only are they super bright, they're four feet. I, you can use them in so many different ways, but you also get like any color that you want. So if you want to use them to change up your background color. You can make them blue, red, any color. And I have eight of these. I actually bought them for a shoot that I did for my client work. I was able to do some really cool stuff with red light and texture in the background. And you can put them all on a controller. That's where I was at before my daughter spit up on me. Controller, let's just turn these off. So this is just my set with no background light. This is my key light, my Aperture 120D Mark II, and the one up top, my Aperture 120D Mark I. And I can control them all from this remote. Now, I also have this setup where I have the background on these lights as well. So I have in each of these triangles a light up top, and you can see it right there. It's up there. Those are two more aperture lights, and they're the light storm, just the bars. They're great for, you know, just background lights, and just they're good lights to work with. Originally, what I thought was I wanted to do these two window designs. I wanted to create more depth, and this is something that you guys can do in your studios at home. Create more depth. Try not to push yourself up against a wall. Try not to put yourself in a corner. What you wanna do is have some separation. So my idea behind this was to build this set, the geodome, and have these windows where you can kind of see through. So that was kind of my idea behind the studio. Now, it's evolved and it's changed, and the reason that I haven't done this video is because I keep evolving the studio and I wasn't completely satisfied with it. And this brings up a good point. When it comes to building out a studio, 
I think you need to have more of a plan before you go and just start putting things in the space. Whether it's a spare bedroom, it's a garage, you actually have a space dedicated to shooting, you really wanna think through your brand and then you also wanna think through how you're going to use the space. I found after building this space and after using it, I am much more fluid in the way that I shoot. I don't just have one spot that I wanna sit at all the time. Now in my old studio, I had a spot that I sat in and that was like my spot that I sat and I didn't really change it up. I did start adding a secondary standing position and then when I had more space, when I had this garage, I realized that I just like shooting in all angles and I love just like moving around. So the next space that I'm gonna build, I'm actually going to really think through the entire layout, 360, and actually light the entire space as if it's one whole set so that I could put the camera here, I could put the camera here, I could put the camera here. And so you need to think through your style of shooting and how you wanna use the space. Are you someone that wants just one dedicated space? Do you want just like a simple backdrop, a gray, a blue, a pink, you know, one spot? Or are you someone that's gonna be more fluid and moving? Something to really think about before you actually go through and build a set because when you build like a three wall set like this, you're really kind of married to that and that's all you can do because you know, when you get to the edges, it's not as pretty as you can see, like around this, it doesn't look that good. All right, let's turn these cam TV lights back on. They do have different styles of cam TV lights. Now I just have these on a simple light stand and you know, I can move them all around the studio depending on where I need them. So I either put them on the ground and shoot up, put them on the sides, but having this table back here is a great place for me to do product work. So every time I'm shooting like a product and I wanna get some B-roll, this is like my place to get B-roll. And I, you know, depending on where I put it in my backdrop, I can create some really cool looking effects. And when you marry this with some movement, so I use a Jib One in my studio, which Jib Ones are a great tool to be able to get moving style shots. And I've found that in a studio space like this, having a Jib One is awesome. Now they're not the most versatile tools in the world, like, and they're actually kind of cumbersome to work with, but when you put them on a solid tripod and you put them on wheels, they're amazing to work with in a studio. So let me just show you since we're over here, my storage solution. I just have two of these silver wire racks and I put on one side of them the egg crate to dampen the sound a little bit, but these are all on wheels and I can shift them around and use these two sides with the soundproofing on it to create less echo. I haven't really used it that much, but it was a good idea when I made it. A ton of egg crates to store, to store all of my stuff. And it's super easy if I'm here in the studio or I go out on a client shoot, I just fill my van with a ton of these egg crates, grab a cart, makes it super easy to use gear here and also use gear out in the field. All right, let's talk about wheels. So these are just a set of wheels that you can put your stands on, your lights on, cameras on. These are what I put at the bottom of my Jib One. And what this allows me to do is just shift stuff around the studio. And I have these set of wheels on everything in my studio. So if it's my monitor, I can wheel my monitor where I need, want my monitor to be able to see myself. I can wheel it anywhere. So if I'm using the Jib One, I can wheel it to different spots, whether I'm doing products or I wanna put the Jib One over here and do some behind the scenes style shooting. Easy to wheel around with something like this. With everything being on wheels, I just wheel it into space wherever I want it, flip it on and start shooting. That's been one of the biggest things about having this dedicated space is being able to flip on cameras and just start rolling instead of having to set up everything every time I have to go shoot. So if you don't want something like these big long bar lights, I highly suggest getting some of these. These are just little RGB lights and you could use them to light up background elements. These are what I've used in my old studio. This is what I'm using in this studio as well. And they're great to add some extra hits of light on different elements in the background, whether it's like, you know, a bookshelf having some light just hit that, or it's just like one element, you know, having individual lights to hit different things around your studio, it's gonna help make your lighting look that much more dynamic. Okay, over here is my workbench, and this is one of those Husky just tool chests, but this is great to store like film equipment. I have lenses in here, I have tools, I have everything that I need to create my content. And this is just a space that I come to like clean my lenses. This is all my cl lens cleaner stuff this way. So this is where I come to work on different camera gear and you know clean things, play with things, work with things. This is different than my space over there because I never have to worry about shooting over here. This is just a dedicated workbench. And it's good to have a space that you can just work so that if you want to like play around with different camera gear, you want to set things up, 
having a space like this is helpful. And these Husky just tool chests become invaluable to creators. I think my next space, I'm gonna buy more of this style of product and actually build out an entire work area where I could just put batteries on to charge so I don't ever have to pull out chargers. I just have a space, I come, boom, put all my chargers and go. And that's one thing I was gonna build in this space, but I'm moving, so, um, you know, I didn't fully build out the studio to the full extent that I wanted to. And also, it's extremely hot in here. I don't know if you're seeing the sweat drip down yet. I guess now is a good time to mention that we insulated the garage, but it didn't actually keep it cool. I put an AC unit in there and just in the California heat in the summer, it just does not stay cool. And I apologize for the mess back here. I am packing right now. I'm about to move. So it's just a cluttered camera gear everywhere. And I'm shooting this right now on ProRes RAW on the Z cam. So this is probably gonna be a ridiculous file size, but gotta test out this camera and see what it's all about. And that's one thing, I've never had an air conditioned studio in the entire time of building this channel. So I've had this channel four years now, and all of those spaces, whenever it's summer that I'm shooting, if you're seeing me dripping sweat, it's because I don't have AC. I'm shooting right now at 10 a.m. I'm trying to get this done before this just turns into a sauna. So one area that doesn't get a whole lot of attention is my gym setup. So I have my kettlebells, I have my weights, I have my rower, kind of all sits in the corner because when I open the garage, then it allows me to go out there and work out. And that's just part of the studio. So I built this little corner over here. I've got two chairs, I've got my rug. Um, this is where I do my live streaming from. I don't do a ton of live streaming, but when I do, I have this set up. So down here, I have my Blackmagic live stream connection and I could put my laptop here and just go for it and it's all set up where I just plug in and go. These racks are super invaluable for creators and I use racks all the time, whether it's in my editing setup or it's here in the garage. In my office, I have an entire rack setup that has everything I need for editing and I can just plug in my laptop. When I'm in my studio, I like just being able to flip on cameras and let them roll and give myself the freedom to mess up and give myself the freedom to do things over and over again and play around and not have to worry so much about, you know, what's going on around me. When you have a studio, when you have a dedicated space where you're not getting interrupted, it allows you to just be more creative and play around. I come out here, sit in my chairs, and this is my place just to think and work through ideas and, and be my base camp for the bigger adventures that I wanna go out and do. And that's why I called this base camp. Like I've mentioned it a few times in my videos, but this is essentially my space, it's my base camp. And if you can find a dedicated space in your house, in your apartment, that is just yours for creating content, it's gonna make things so much easier when it comes to the whole process and being able to put out weekly videos or two videos a week or whatever your consistency is, having space that you can go back to and make it your own is super important and I highly suggest, you know, go make your own space and make it really fit you. There's a lot that went into this and this is, like I said, this is a stepping stone. This is my last day after I finish editing this video and do all the B-roll, I'm gonna tear all this down and I'm gonna start over. Welcome to my YouTube studio. Now in this video, I wanna break down exactly how I built this studio to be the perfect space to film my videos when I'm here in my office, but also be a place where I can work on my scripts and do all of my editing. So I'm gonna show you everything that I use here in my office to make it super simple to be able to flip on the camera and start recording. So what we're gonna go through is my entire camera setup that I use, my editing setup, and then just generally how I set up this room to be a good place to be able to just make content and be a creative space. Now the space that works for me doesn't necessarily work for you, but I just wanted to give you a look inside my space. Maybe it'll give you some ideas of things that you can do for your creative space. So this is just a spare bedroom in my house. My daughter is on the other side of this wall watching Toy Story right now, and I can kind of hear it, but you actually can't hear it at all because it's so low. All I'm hearing is a little boof, boof, boof. Now, in terms of space, let's measure this out. So the actual dimensions are about nine by 14 feet. Not the biggest space in the world. It's definitely a little bit longer, but in terms of width, it's pretty narrow. But what I've done is I've made the most out of this space. And so as we walk to this end, you can see that I have my whole set back here and that faces towards this door, which I've left this natural light coming through. I like the way this looks with the natural light coming through. And so I have my set down there, 
my editing setup here, and then I have a closet. So first let's break down this set. This is just a cheap table from Amazon. As you can hear, it's kind of squeaky. This is just something that I could easily move around and it's a good place to sit at, show a couple things here on the desk, but it's not overly big. It's basically just used for my set. Now, in terms of what I have set up here, is I have one light that's at a 45 degree angle. And this light is an Aperture 60X with a small softbox on it. So the light is a little bit more focused on me and doesn't spill as much into the background. And because I'm so far this way in the room, when I'm hitting myself with the light, the shadow kind of falls down that way. So you're not seeing it on any walls or anything like that. I wanted to create separation and make a pool of light here and then a pool of light back there. Now the second light that I'm using is one up on the ceiling. And this I just mounted on the wall, probably not the best light for this situation, but I think it gives me some extra ambient light and it gives me a nice rim. So it gives me a little bit more of that separation. Now I don't use a fill light, I just have my key, my hair, and then I just have some background lights. And so for my background, what I'm using is two Aperture MCs. Those are what are colored in the background. And I can change those to be basically any color. And I like just having a small hit of color in the background, whether that's an orange teal look or right now I have just a teal look. The last light that I use is that bar light that you see back there. It's just a practical light, which means that it's a light that you use in the shot. So it's another one of these bar lights and I just have it turned down to like 10%. And the reason that I'm using that light is to match those other bars of light which are in the back. Now these bars way back here are my doors. And this is actually just some curtains with a little bit of light spilling around the edges. You see when I pull this out, a lot more light comes in. And instead of closing this off and making it a complete blackout studio, I actually like the look of these bars and I just added this additional bar on the side. And so in terms of lighting, I use a little bit of natural light. I don't use a lot, it's just those bars in the background. But I let that spill in and then I add these additional lights. My key, my hair, the two colored lights, and the one tube light. And my goal is just to make it look more dynamic and look like the space is bigger than it is. And for audio, I use the Rode NTG4 and that's sitting right above me. You can see it right here. I just have it on this arm that comes right over the desk. And so whenever I sit down here, I have my audio, my light, and I could just hit record on the camera and start recording. Now the camera that I'm using is the A7S Mark III. Now this is probably overkill for an office camera. I could get away with something much cheaper and much smaller, but I use two A7S Mark III's to make all of my videos and when I'm home, I just put one over here. So I use this one here when I'm out and if I need a second camera, I'll bring my other one with me. But I shoot everything on two Sony A7S Mark III's. Now the Rode is an XLR microphone. So I have the Sony XLR adapter on top of my A7S Mark III and I'm using house power. So I have a battery adapter in my A7S Mark III. All of this is plugged into the wall, so I never have to worry about batteries when it comes to my camera. I can just flip it on and start recording. Now I use this app that allows me to see myself on my phone. So I'm monitoring myself, I can record, I can start and stop the record here on my phone, and I usually just have this sitting right out of frame. But what ties all of this together and makes it so that it's super clean is this one pole that I have that is the setup that everything sits on. So this is called a gear tree. And I think this really made my whole design work together so cohesively. And that's because everything is mounted to this one pole. I have a pole, it's not drilled into anything. It just uses tension from the ground to the ceiling and it just holds everything on the singular pole. Now from here, you can build out whatever you want. And so there's so many different attachments, whether it's a lighting attachment, an audio attachment, and just things like these bars that you can attach things like cameras or like I'm using here, this is my hat rack, but you can completely change everything about this. And I got this system back in probably November of last year, and I've been using it ever since. And as soon as I, started using this system, it just made everything so much easier because I don't have to have like a tripod on the ground, I don't have to have light stands, I don't have to have an extra boom arm on another C stand. Everything is on this one stand. And you can even add more to this and they have options that just hook on the side of your desk as well. But for my space, this is what works great for me and I could keep adding to this if I want additional accessories that 
work for this setup. And in terms of cables, I just run all my cables on the backside of the pole. I use some Velcro and I have a power outlet down there. So it just makes it super simple. This is like one of the best parts of this space and what helps me make it a more minimalist design. And having a minimalist setup is something that is super important to me. So as a creator, I don't like lots of mess and I don't like just having things cluttered everywhere. For me, I like to have things super clean and super minimal. So just the few pieces of gear that I need to be able to make my videos and work in my space. I try to keep this space as clean as possible. Basically everything here has a function and is used. And I could easily clutter up the space with a lot of additional things and keep cameras out and different parts. But for me, what I found is that when I'm working in this kind of creative writing, editing space, I wanna just have it super minimal. And so that's what I've done with everything in this space. Now trying to get better audio in this space because it is pretty echoey with these walls. On the ceiling, I have a bunch of acoustic foam. I just lined my ceiling with it. And then down here on the ground, I have carpet. And between the acoustic foam and the carpet, it definitely helps dampen the sound. So when I'm filming in my desk over there, I just push this big chair out of the way and I use this plasticky chair that was from a shoot for my production company and it just, it's easier because I don't like the look of the big chair with the headrest when I'm on that space doing my A-roll. But for here at my desk, this is, you know, I like having one of these bigger chairs, just more comfortable. But the main focus that I built this entire studio around is this desk and my editing setup. So I use a two monitor system. I have a big curved monitor and then I have another flat monitor up top here. And I went with the stacked monitors for a few reasons. One is when I'm editing in Final Cut, I can see my timeline super long here on the bottom. And then what I do in the top is I make it full screen. So there is nothing on the screen besides my image. So this just gives me a better way to see my videos when I'm editing them. And also when it comes time to color grade, this is a color accurate monitor. So this is what I use for all of my color grading. And I just like the ability to have a bigger monitor that I could see my image full screen whenever I'm working on a project rather than being just a corner of the screen as a whole. And for keyboard mouse, I use a Logitech keyboard and mouse. It's all Bluetooth hooked into my computer, which you're probably wondering where my computer is. My computer is actually in the closet. And I'll show you that whole setup in a second, but. I put everything in the closet so that all you see here at the desk is keyboard, mouse, monitors, and then my two studio monitors for audio. And these are Mackie HR824s. They're just good studio monitors to hear my audio super clean. And then I have my little Ikea plant. Gotta have the Ikea little grassy plant. I don't know how long I've had this thing, but a little pop of green in the corner. And I guess the last thing is Daily Stoic. It's a book I read every day and it's just here so I can grab it whenever I need it. And how the monitors are set up is that there's a single pole attached to my desk and both the monitors are on that pole. I'm going for this completely minimal design so I wanna have the least amount of stands, the least amount of cables and everything is just tidied up nice and neat. All the cables for this setup are underneath the desk and they're actually going through the wall. So I punched a hole through the wall and punched it into the closet and that's where my whole computer setup is. Now, two things that I think are super useful. One, just have some power ports right here with some USB power. So if I ever need to just charge something quick, just working them with something, maybe a new camera, I can just put it right here on the desk and charge it. And then this little drawer, which has pens and adapters and anything else. So this is my whole computer setup. I run everything off a 14 inch MacBook Pro. So my setup is fairly simple. I have a rack case in here where I put everything in this rack case and then on top of it sits my laptop. And the reason I did it this way is because I wanted to just be able to pull out a few cables, grab the laptop and go. And then when I get home, I just set the laptop in, plug in a few cables and then I could sit down and start editing. So I've thought through this setup and I've done a bunch of different iterations and it may not look the cleanest, but it does work super well. So how it works is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I have three USB C's on this MacBook Pro and an HDMI out. The one HDMI out goes to one of these two monitors. Now the USB C's go to a few different things. I have two different eight bay hard drive RAID systems. This one up top here, that is my main edit drive that I work off of for my whole library of footage. 
Anything new that I'm working on just stays on the laptop. I have a four terabyte hard drive in my laptop, so whatever project is current, I could just leave it on the hard drive and then move it to this RAID when I'm done with it. But if I ever need to dig into old footage, which is something that I do all the time in my videos, it all lives on this one RAID system. This is a 98 terabyte hard drive. Now I have a second one of these down here and that one is left as individual drives. And so for my production company, I'm constantly swapping drives in and out, going back into my archive and grabbing different things. And also I'm just always backing up footage. So everything that's on this master 98 terabyte hard drive also has a backup somewhere else because you never want a single point of failure. And yes, a RAID is redundant to a degree, like this one is a RAID 5, so I have a single hard drive failure. But the issue is if that drive fails and then another drive fails, well then I'm screwed. So basically, I have this RAID set up as just a huge drive that I could use at any point. It is secure to a degree, but I do make backups of everything and I keep that offsite somewhere else. Now to add additional SSDs when I'm editing, I have a single Thunderbolt 3 down here where I can add on small SSDs. And then I also have a Blackjet tower. Now this Blackjet tower is super useful because all of these cartridges are swappable. Right now you can see I have six SD card readers and that's when I'm doing the production with my production company. I can put all six cards in at once, set them all up to transfer on hedge and then it just all goes and it all gets verified. It's a super easy way to deal with a ton of footage without having to sit there and monitor it all. However, I could also swap these out and put SSDs in all of these drives. So I have these SSDs, which I could swap in and out if I need additional fast hard drives to work off of. So depending on what the project is, if I need some fast SSDs, well, I could use these and put them in and out of the Blackjet system or I could use portable SSDs and hook them to my Thunderbolt 3 down there. So a lot of different options for memory and it just makes it easy so I could plug in anything at any time. And then the last USB-C port that I have on my laptop hooks up to a dock. That's where I could plug in some USB-A ports and I also have another monitor out that goes to the second monitor. And then of course up top I have my super expensive YouTube counter. I just keep it up there. It pops up every thousand subscribers. And then on top of that I have a couple shelves. So I have some tools, some hard drives, and then I have my whole setup that I use for voiceover work when I'm doing my story pieces or if I just need to use voiceover in any of my videos. So this is what I use for voiceover work. I have my Zoom Classic H4n. I've had this thing since college. I mean, this thing is ancient, still works great. And I plug in an XLR, I have my Rode pod mic, and then I just have this little set of acoustic foam. It's a little cove, so I could sit here and I could do some audio for voiceover work. I like just having a easy system to be able to sit here and do some recording. I've thought about actually putting this whole setup onto my pole and making it all in one, but it's not that hard to pull this out and just have my voiceover. Or if I'm not shooting any A-roll over here, I'll just keep this on my desk and just keep it here so that I can come over and do some different voiceover work if that's something that I'm working on. Now I have this other window here and I got these blackout shades. So if I do want light in here, I can open these up and I can bring in some additional light. But I also have the same blackout shades up here, so if I don't want to have this look of these bars in the background, well what I could do is bring down these blackout shades and then I could just black out the entire room. Typically I don't really do that, these work fine, but if I'm working on something where I want no light in this room, well then I'll just pull down this blackout shade and it completely blacks out the room. I think it's always good wherever you're setting up your YouTube studio is you have the option to be able to black it out if you really need to just control the light and not have any light spilling into the space. Also over here I have my fake plant which is great for some green and some background elements. And then of course my 100,000 YouTube award sits right up there as well. Now on the bottom of my rack I have backup power. So if the power goes out in the neighborhood, well, I can have about two to three hours of power still on these hard drives, which allows me to just close up projects, get things done and turn everything off. When I close this, it actually cuts out all the sound of all those hard drives and it's silent in this room. All I have is my AC unit, which AC is super important. So I installed a little AC unit up here in the corner the actual compressors outside. But when I was in my old studio back in my apartment years ago, I had no AC, I was on the third floor, 
And I just was always shooting videos and just dripping sweat and drying off. And I told myself I would never have a space without proper AC again. And we have AC in our house. However, I got a separate unit just for this room so that I can completely control temperature so that when I'm filming, I'm not sitting here dripping sweat no matter what it is outside. Now, another thing that I like to have is a whiteboard. I like to have a big whiteboard. This is one that's on wheels, it can move around, and it's got two sides so I could flip it. So when I'm working on a story project, I can wheel my whiteboard over here and it could be right next to my desk and I could be doing some writing, I could be scripting out things, I could be trying to plot out what's going on while also working on the edit. So I could very easily move around this space and just be able to have a space where I can write anything notes and just put it up physically in a big area so that I can work on my projects. When I'm working on stories, a lot of times I like to just write down a bunch of different notes and having a whiteboard just makes it so that I can get off my computer because I don't always like just sitting on the computer for everything. I like having notes physically in front of me and instead of using like paper on my desk, I like to use the big whiteboard. Now to fill this wall, because it was just a blank gray wall for a while. I just have a few drone shots that I've taken. These are canvas prints that were 30 bucks on some deal. And I just swap these out once in a while for different photos. Just kind of brings some life to this room, especially this big gray wall. And the reason that it's this color gray is this is a film neutral gray. It's a special paint. So when you're doing color grading, the gray behind is not reflecting any color, not an orange tint or a blue tint. So you could see your colors accurately on the monitor. So I just painted the whole room this color and it, it works well for filming and editing. So the good thing about this setup on the pole here is that like my microphone, I could just push up out of the way. The light, I could just push out of the way. So it's all super movable so that I could get over here into the corner. So when I'm not filming, I just have these things pushed up out of the way, camera back. And so I have complete space. I don't have anything on the ground that's obstructing where I'm going. And I have these two Husky shelves. These are work shelves for like tools, but they work great for camera gear as well. I have a little charging station here. I think six charging ports, USB. I have my iPad here. I have some AirPods right now, but if I need to charge anything, this is a little station that I have set up. Over here, I have my Aperture MCs. I have a ton of memory cards and just some things that I need access to all the time. A lint roller, which I have out to roll off my black shirts because I feel like there's always stuff on my black shirts and I have it out so to remind myself to actually do it, and then I forget to do it. And then I have a chair for visitors. I have my robot vacuum, cleans it nicely in this space. And then I have a drum. So if I ever get bored of editing, I could sit here and play my drum. And that's it. Super simple and minimal. That's how I like it when I'm in my creative space. But this is the perfect creative YouTube office for me. And hopefully this will give you some ideas on things that you can do in your space that could work for you. All right, so now that we've gone through all of my different YouTube studios, the last thing I wanna dig into is what I do when I'm outside my studio. A lot of the content that I produce, I'll go outside, I'll go on a hike, or I'll be out traveling and shooting a video. And in those moments, I need to be able to make this happen without making it a huge process to set up everything. And so I don't bring a ton of extra lighting, I don't bring a ton of extra gear to do these types of A-roll videos when I'm away from my office. And so there's five things that we'll go through that's really gonna help you when you wanna shoot and you're in the outdoors. Now, number one is lighting. So when I'm working outside, the key things that I'm looking for is sun position. So if the sun's in the sky and it's right overhead, well, it's not gonna look that good. You're gonna have these weird shadows on your face. It's just not gonna be that flattering. I typically try to shoot my A-roll closer to sunrise or sunset if possible so the sun is lower in the sky. This allows you to be able to put yourself in a position where you can have the sun kind of lighting you like this light is, kind of at a 45 degree angle, or you could even do more of a side light and be able to create more definition with your face so that it's not just fully in black if the sun's behind you or fully in the sun if the sun's right in front of you or, you know, right up above where the 
shadows are going down and you have these big raccoon eyes. So ideally when you're working with the sun, you just want it a little bit lower in the sky and you want to put it at a 45 or kind of a side light and that's going to give you the best look to be able to just create some interest in your shot. Now if you want more beauty lighting, well you're going to want to keep it at a 45 degree angle like this light here so that you have a nice fill on your face and also you want to think of your background. So whenever you're shooting outside, the key is finding an interesting background that's going to complement whatever you're shooting. You don't want to just put yourself up against a brick wall, rather find some area that has depth so that you could use this location to your advantage and really play around compositions to make it interesting so that your A-roll has more flair than just you against a wall somewhere. Now if you're shooting in more of a cloudy situation, well it's going to work to your advantage because clouds typically have nice soft light, so it's going to make everything look better on camera. And one thing to note though, when it is cloudy, the sun still does have a position somewhere in the sky and it might be brighter over here versus over here. And so when you're shooting in clouds, you still want to think about where the sun is and where the brightest part of the sky is and angle yourself towards that brighter part of the sky. It's just going to make for a better looking shot because you'll have more contrast rather than just a completely flat face. Now the other thing that you could do is find shade because you don't have all these hard shadows that are casted from direct sunlight. Rather, you could position yourself to the opening where the sun is and be able to use that as a key light as if it's like a big giant key light. So we got the shaded spot. And you can see as soon as you get out of that sun, like look how harsh that is. But as soon as you get in the shade with the sun coming in from the sides, it just has such much a better, better look. Much better look. Yeah. You could also use reflections off buildings or anything that's brighter in the place that you're at to be able to act as that big key light that you use in your studio. But one word of caution when it comes to reflective light, if the building say is yellow or red, well it's going to reflect that color back on you as well. Now the second thing that's important is your audio. There's two ways that I do audio when I'm out away from my office. The first is a shotgun microphone. I just use a shotgun microphone on top of my camera and I typically put a windscreen on that because I don't wanna hear any wind sounds or any breeze, so I just wanna have it as clean as possible. So if I'm shooting with this kind of a framing on a wider lens, then I'll use a shotgun microphone. However, I also do videos where I step away from camera and for those, I'll use the DJI mic and that's just a little wireless mic that goes right here on my chest, I'll either put it on my backpack or I'll put it on my shirt or even under my shirt and that allows me to step away from camera. So whenever I'm more than an arm stretch away, I'll use the DJI mic so that I could get anywhere I want and be able to use any different lenses that I want. When I was recently in India shooting a documentary, there was a lot of moments where I wanted to get away from camera to be able to show the scene that we're in, but still be able to have these conversations on camera that you would be able to hear and be able to be a part of. And so a lot of those situations, we're using a DJI mic just so that we could get away from camera. So use the microphones that make sense for the situation that you're in. If you just wanna use something like a wireless mic the whole time and not even think about a shotgun mic, you could do that or you could switch between shotgun and wireless depending on where you are in position to your camera. Now the third thing you need to think about is your camera and your lens. So when I'm shooting a roll and I want to do kind of vlog style where I'm holding the camera, well my favorite lens is a 20 millimeter for vlog style content. I don't personally like the look of the 16 millimeter, so I found the focal length that I like is a 20 millimeter. And so I'll use the 20 millimeter if I'm ever hand holding the camera doing vlogs or if I'm just talking to camera and I put the camera on a tripod. It's a good distance to be able to use that shotgun microphone and not have to worry about a wireless mic because even though a wireless mic is good, there is still instances where it might not work perfectly. So having a shotgun mic makes it just super easy to shoot and you don't even really have to think about much when you're doing this kind of vlog style content. However, if I'm getting away from camera and I wanna have a wider shot or I just wanna show a different style of composition, I might use something like a 35 or even a 50 millimeter and in those situations, I'm gonna use the wireless mic to be able to capture my audio. And also having that lens is gonna give you a completely different feel. If you're doing a roll where you're just talking to camera like this, Putting it on a 50 is gonna look really nice, especially if you're shooting wide open and you have a shallow depth of field. Now, you could also close down your aperture and see what's going on in the background, depending on the type of content you're producing. So, if you're talking it about a location, it might not be good to make it super shallow and out of focus, and it actually might be really good to see what's going on back there because of the content that you're producing. And that brings me to the fourth thing that you need to think about when you're outside office, and that is, how you're shooting. So as I've said earlier, I do some vlog and I do some on tripod. You wanna make sure that you're not just 
hand holding the camera and vlogging everything because that doesn't necessarily always look the best. You wanna put the camera on a tripod when possible and start playing around more with compositions and seeing what's in the background. That's why I like to use wireless mics, get away from camera and use some longer lenses because it's gonna give a different feel than just always having a wide lens and walking around and vlogging. A lot of times if it's just a tip video, say I'm doing 10 tips for drone flying, well, instead of doing all vlog or all on a tripod, I'll mix it up so I might do one tip on a tripod, the next tip I'll walk around and vlog, next tip I'll be on a tripod with a different background, different lens. That way it breaks up the video and it has just more of an interesting visual style than all being one style. So something to think about is breaking up that visual narrative and playing around with some vlog style and also some on the tripod, just because when you're outside the office, it is fun to be able to move around, put the camera in different locations and also change up how the camera is moving in relation to you. And the last thing to think about is your color profile when you're out filming. Whenever I'm here in my office, I just typically use Cinetone. That's just a color profile that Sony has built into a lot of their cameras, and it just has a clean look out of camera. This is a Cinetone, and the reason that I use just a standard look here in my office is that, well, I control all of the lighting. So if something's too bright in the background, well, I can dim it so that it works for this, and that way I don't really have to do any color grading or add a LUT when I'm here in my office. However, when I go outside, I'm always shooting in log. And the reason for that is I wanna be able to control my highlights and my my shadows and be able to create a look out of the scene that I'm filming in. If I use just a standard profile, a lot of times the sky is gonna get blown out you can't do anything with it, it's just not gonna look that good. Personally, when I'm shooting outside the office, I'm outdoors, there's bright sun, there's clouds, I'm always shooting an S-log, and then from there, I'm either adding a LUT onto that footage, or I go through and make a color grade for that specific video shot in that location. And color grading really comes down to the kind of look that you want out of your footage, and you can really change it up depending on the style of content that you're producing. If you wanna learn more about color grading, I'll put a course down below in the description that goes through all of the color grading tools that you can use and how you can create your own creative color grade when you're out filming. Now I know that was a ton to unpack in all of this video. However, if you wanna learn more about shooting outdoor content in nature, well make sure you check out this video right here. It goes through 26 different tips on how to shoot outdoor style content. And a lot of this will be really helpful if you just wanna flip on the camera and hit record wherever you're at. All right, I'll see you over there.